we kind of put prayer in a category all to itself. It's as if um, you have to stop everything you're doing to pray. And when I think of that in the context of, well, if I'm in a friendship with God, you know, when I'm walking down the street with you, I don't have to suddenly say, okay, Alice, I'm going to talk to you now. <laughs> we, just start, we just start conversing. Uh, so what, what has been helpful to you in your own prayer life? And, and how do you even see your prayer life? Because I think people see it in a lot of ways, some of them rather strange. <laughs> well, I, I know I grew up on the East Coast in the devotional Catholic milieu, which was very mm -hmm. familiar to people um, up to the 1960s. And that was, uh, I always say that the, the 60s came in the 70s in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, you know, we had a, a longer bout of, of, of what we call the preconciliar church where I was growing up. And, and so the devotional Catholic milieu, which is very wonderful and very helpful in terms of, of having a sense of, of the mystery and the sacredness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of, of time and place, sort of bound you to time and place when it came to prayer. Mm -hmm, I mean, you, you mm -hmm. knew there was a place for this and a time yeah. for this, and that meant if you were elsewhere, you were not in the presence of God, you were not, you didn't have God's ear. Yeah. And so, you know, the idea of visiting the church you know, mm -hmm. we would make visits, um, was very important to me. And as a child, I, I loved being in the building of yeah. the church. Yeah. Strangely, uh, and, uh, maybe not so strangely, because I was very shy, pathologically shy, <laughs> which you can appreciate. <laughs> um, I preferred to be in churches when there were no people there, mm -hmm. because I felt like mm -hmm. God was bigger when the mm -hmm. people were absent. When people were there, they got in the way of my relationship <laughs> to God. Yeah, and I think yeah. for a lot of Catholics, that's still true, mm -hmm. that if they grew up in, in that understanding, people are in the way of your relationship with God, so that's why they want people to shut up in church. Mm -hmm. And they want, I had a guy once who came up to me recently at, at uh, the Easter Vigil, and he asked me to move because I was in the way of the sight line of him and this one statue that he was communing with, and he couldn't pray to Mary unless I got out of the way of his sight line. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I thought, that's what we did to people, or that's mm -hmm. what that worldview often led people to have a very mm -hmm. limited understanding of their relationship mm -hmm. uh, to God and prayer, and, and the pipeline of salvation was very, yeah. very limited. Um, I think these things are helpful. I myself pray with icons and religious mm -hmm. images, oh, yeah. and I find them wonderful. I also love sacred space, and I can just mm -hmm. melt into a, an empty church or chapel or uh, you know, a prayer corner somewhere mm -hmm. and, and really become very uh, involved in, in contemplation. But I no longer, I mean, there was a point at which devotional Catholicism paled for me, it faded for me. And, and that point was, was as it is for many people when I went to college. Mm -hmm. And I started to experience uh, Bible, spirit, biblical spirituality, yeah. I would say. When I started reading the Bible for myself, all of a sudden, biblical storytelling became my point of contact with God, yeah. and that was so real for me mm -hmm. that the devotional church really began to, to lose its, its attraction to me. And the Bible, and the Word, and that story is something that's much more portable. Mm -hmm. And so now God was wherever I was, or God was wherever the Word was, yeah. being proclaimed, or being read, or being uh, engaged, and, and so that changed things for me. Um, I think I have since come full circle, I'm 50 years old this year. And 50 makes such a big difference in your perspective. I mean, now you realize it's not an either-or mm -hmm. proposition. Most things in life are not either-or, yeah, yeah. but it's a both-and. Mm -hmm. You know, I have reclaimed uh, a, a sense of contact with the, the mystery of the church and, and, mm -hmm. and the sanctity of, of sacred time and place. But I also am very, very uh, Bible-believing Christian. I'm mm -hmm. very uh, engaged with, with the Word. And so prayer now for me is everything. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's both the, the singular experience, uh, I'm still very much drawn to the silence, but mm -hmm. the word is, is the absolute fulfillment of silence. Yeah. Know, and, and I like, yeah, I like the way you put that. Yeah, so. I like that. You were talking about how your devotional prayers were replaced for a time by the biblical stories. It, it reminds me of, uh, you know, in Ignatian prayer, one of the practices, one, one of ways to pray is to actually put yourself in a Bible story and and contemplate on that and imagine being with Jesus as he fed the 5,000 or, or whatever 
and it's a nice blend of, you know, you have the, the experience of prayer that's also really wedded to the scripture stories themselves, which I found to be a very powerful thing because I grew up in a tradition where people prayed out loud and they kind of made it up as they went along. I was not brought up in a, in a uh, uh, liturgical church. And so I felt a lot of uh, uh, a lot of pressure to be good at praying, and to be good at praying socially. I mean, it was a very strange thing because you know you just had to be a good prayer. And after a while, you feel like I'm not praying; I'm giving a speech to people, or I'm you know I'm kind of. It, it was just it got to be very strange, and then and then uh, I think I've got gotten more comfortable with just silence as prayer, but. Uh, one of the funny things that's, that's happened to me, though, and, and you know, we're both introverts, so we, we know how this feels, but I've discovered in the past year and a half that so much of my strongest prayer experiences have been on the train, commuting to work, when I'm in the midst of all these people, and, and you know, I don't know them. I may recognize one or two that we, you know, we sort of ride at the same time every day, but it's been... Um, it's just been a new experience in understanding that God's presence takes so many forms. Sometimes, sometimes God's presence is in, you know, the, the people who are all around me on the train. And there are days when I'm just, I'm stunned at how beautiful everyone is, you know. And it doesn't mean that I engage them in conversation necessarily, but, but I recognize them as God's presence to me. And uh, so that is... That has changed my prayer life. You know, I, I, was, I always thought that, well, prayer for me is best in a very private space without people around. But now it's like every train ride, I, I'm wondering, you know, how is the Holy Spirit going to touch me today? Because it's just God seems to be so present in perfect strangers. So. And I think that that's helpful and that's, that's growthful, mm -hmm. that it expands outward. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that you were wrong the first time. No, no. But that you're more right now because you have mm -hmm. a more inclusive understanding. Mm -hmm. Or I think it's just uh, a matter of... I think, I think we develop in... in um, well, I, I know what you were saying to me recently is that you, you really feel like you're praying most of the time. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you sense that prayer is always happening. And, and it's kind of the same with me, too. I almost feel like it's artificial when I say, okay, I'm going to pray now because, well, going through my day, this, it's like a constant conversation. I mean, some days more than others. I don't want to sound like I'm real pious here because I'm not, but, but I sense that, that God's presence is with me no matter what. Yes, and, and, and when, when St. Paul says pray unceasingly, that used to really baffle me because yeah. what I was thinking, of course, was that you've got to constantly be fingering beads or you've got to, <laughs> you know, be muttering the Jesus prayer or something. And more and more I have come to understand that, you know, I, I almost become baffled when I hear people use liturgical language that says let's come into the presence of God or be mindful mm -hmm. that we're now in the presence of God. And I'm thinking, and like five minutes ago, where were we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? It would, it would seem inconceivable to me now to imagine mm -hmm. a time or a place when mm -hmm. I'm not in relationship to God or not in the presence of God and certainly not relating to God. There's no place to hide. Yeah. I heard a, a priest say just this weekend, and there's, there's no way to flee the presence of God.